Hey guys, and welcome to my Yokai Watch Wibble Wobble Sultimate type guide, where I'll be talking about each of the different types of Wibwob found in the game and the usefulness of their Sultimates. I will also mention a few Yokai of each type that are viable, whether it be for their power or easiness of raising their Sultimate level. Keep in mind that this guide will eventually become out of date when new Yokai and Sultimate types are added. Firstly, I'm going to talk about Wibwob Poppers, which is one of the most common types of Wibwob in the game. Wibwob Poppers deal damage to the opponent by using Wibwob on the board. The size of the Wibwob affect the damage output. Wibwob Poppers are good overall offensive yokai. There are different types of Wibwob Poppers. Ones that pop random Wibwob, others in the centre of the screen, at the bottom of the screen, down the centre, and in a diagonal line. Early game, these yokai will probably be your best source of damage, however later on you may want to get yokai that deal damage to all targets instead, which I'll be going over in a minute. Notable Wibwob poppers include Shogunyan, Snartle, Lionheart for early game, Zaburka for early game, Jibanyan S, Melanyan, the Julnyans, Slimamanda S, Venoct and Shadow Venoct for random poppers, Cruncher, Gilgaros, SV Snaggerjack S for the ones that pop in the center, Blazaria for popping at the bottom of the screen, and Orcanus for down the middle. Next we have direct attackers, which come in two types, that attack everything and a single target. Direct attackers deal damage to the opponent without popping Wibble on the board. Direct attackers start out quite weak, but if you put in the effort of raising their Sultimates, they can potentially become some of the most powerful attackers in the game. Direct attackers that attack all targets are great for farming Y money and score attack. Single targets are good for the boss score attack specifically, and are also quite strong. Notable direct attackers include Komashura, Swalteria, Watermelnyan, Libertinyan, and Sproink S for ones that attack everything. Blandon, Null, and Bananos for single target attackers. Next up we have Ball Makers. Ball making yokai turn two Wibwob on the board into an energy ball that can be tapped to pop surrounding Wibwob. Ball making yokai aren't very good to be honest. They should only really be used early game if you don't have any other options. They don't do too much damage and their ultimates can be kind of finicky if you like tap the wrong thing and waste time. Notable ball makers include QB, Frosttail, Comasan S, Count Cavity, Cerberus, and Cut and Cheese. Next we have Wibwob Inflators. Wibwob Inflators make two random size one Wibwob on the board much bigger, depending on the Sultimate level of your inflator. These yokai are pretty good for building up a quick Sultimate or for making bonus balls for star missions. In our version of Wibwob, they haven't reached their full potential, as there is a legendary in Puni Puni, the Japanese version, that out outclasses every inflator. But for now, good inflators include Signaton, Mimikin A, and Rare Light for early game. Wibwob Rearrangers Wibwob Rearrangers are not usually the best if you're looking to make money or get good scores, but for missions they can be helpful as you can easily build up Sultimates by rearranging your Wibwob. Good rearrangers include Merkel, Demona, Slitheref, and Copperled. Wibwob Transformers. Generally, I would say Wibwob Transformers are not very helpful. Ones early on, like Commissar D and the Illu Trio, change the Wibwob into one that's different from themselves, so you have to put the yokai that they transform into on your team to make it work. The only Wibwob Transformer that doesn't do this is Draconyan who is actually a great yokai for beating the bonus ball and fever time star missions. Hiders Hiders are yokai that remove themselves from the board for a short period of time. They're generally not that strong, as their ultimate move does very little damage, however they can be useful for the missions that involve getting a lot of fever times, as there'll be one less wibwob to link up, so you can make longer chains. Notable hiders include Beetle, Casanono, and Timid Devil. Healers. As the name imply, they heal your HP in battle, though they can be helpful in the main game and on certain missions where you need to survive for longer, I would not recommend using healers on your team, as you could just be using things that deal damage. Notable healers include Staticking, Golden Yarn, Auntie Heart, Mama Aura, 
Pepion, Betterfly, Hinomi, Nurse Tungus for the early game, Eterna, and Everfall. Attack boosters. Attack boosters make your yokai deal more damage, thus you can get a high score with them. These yokai are really helpful for regular stages and score attack, and I'd recommend having one on your team at all times. Good attack boosters include Ciro, Beelzebold, Lava Lord, and Mad Mountain. Score boosters. Similar to attack boosters, score boosters will boost your score and thus earn you more money at the end of a stage. They are very important for score attack and regular money making and I would recommend using at least one of them on your team while playing. There are very few score boosters in the game at the moment but the best one by far is Elder Bloom and the other viable one includes Sergeant Burley. Money boosters. Money boosters increase the amount of Y money you get at the end of a battle. I would honestly not recommend using these, as you'll need to use their assault ultimate three times in a battle to get their best effect. You might as well use score boosters, but I've heard that money makers get buffed later on in the Japanese version, so who knows if we get that. Notable money boosters include Panda Noko and Bluminoko. Experience boosters. Experience boosters increase the amount of EXP you get at the end of a battle. I don't recommend these at all, as the amount of difference they make is very little and you may as well just use attack and score boosters. Notable EXP boosters are Contrarioni and Insomni. Stunners. Stunners will immobilize the enemy for a certain amount of time so they won't attack you. Stunners are situational at best and are only really useful for star missions or if you're having trouble with a boss. Notable stunners include Grape Nian, Sandy and Screek. Defenders. Defenders will reduce the amount of damage you take from enemy yokai. To be honest, there's not really much reason to use these yokai. You might as well just use a stunner or a healer if you're really struggling with a particular stage. Notable defenders are Robonyan and Beetler. Befrienders. Befrienders will charm the enemy, making them easier to befriend. Their effect is really difficult to notice, so it's hard to determine how much of a difference they actually make since befriending rates are so low to begin with. You may be better off just giving the yokai food than use a befriending yokai. The only three befriending yokai in the game are Dandoodle, Casanova, and Shmoopy. Lastly, we have item droppers. Item droppers increase the chance of a yokai dropping an item. Unlike befrienders, their effect is more noticeable, and there are a few item droppers that can easily be got from the Krankakai, so they may be worth bringing if you're looking for a certain item, such as a fusion item. Notable item droppers include Bad Dude, Badanyan, and Sinek. Thanks for watching, and if you have any other questions, let me know in the comments. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.